This is Joseph Drust, and welcome to another video on Z Classroom. In this tutorial, we'll be covering a workflow using ZBrush, the ZBrush to Keyshot Bridge, and Photoshop to aid in generating a conceptual image. This tutorial will be broken down into two parts. The first part, I'll be showing you how to quickly generate a few renders of a blocked out cityscape using ZBrush and the ZBrush to Keyshot Bridge. Then I'll be sending these render passes along to one of my good friends who is a concept artist by the name of Andrew Bosley. Andrew will be picking up the tutorial from there and will be walking you through his process of using these 3D images inside of Photoshop to aid in his concept creation. So to start, I just have ZBrush loaded here. And I'm going to come over here to my tool palette and I'm just going to select this PolyMesh 3D star. And then I'm going to come to the center of my canvas and I'm simply going to click and drag until it roughly reaches about this size. And then I'm going to activate edit mode by coming up here and clicking on edit mode or pressing T on my keyboard. Now once edit mode is active, you'll see you'll have this bar that's actually surrounding the canvas here. And this will let you know that you have edit mode turned on for your actual tool. So now you should be able to come back to the canvas and simply click and drag and you'll start to manipulate that object in space. Now by default, the actual matte cap material red wax is selected. So I'm going to come over here and just click that and then change it to say something like matte cap gray. Now with this object in the scene here, the next thing I want to do is I actually want to turn this into a quick cube so that I can use the Z Modeler brush to kind of create a quick building asset. So I'm going to come over here to the tool palette. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom here and open up the initialize tab. Now with this tab open, I'm just going to come here and click quick cube or the Q cube button right there. Now after this button is pressed, you'll notice that the PolyMesh 3D star has now vanished and now I am left with an actual cube object. I'm going to zoom into this object here quick and I'm going to activate polyframes so I can kind of see the actual shape of this object here and I'm also going to turn on perspective. Now I want to switch to the actual Z Modeler brush so I can come through and start sculpting this actual cube here and generate a different form. So to do this, I can come over here to my brush palette and simply click and then I can locate the Z Modeler brush or I can hit B on my keyboard, I can then isolate by the letter Z, and then I can press M to select the Z Modeler brush. Now with the Z Modeler brush selected, I just want to kind of shrink my draw size down some, so I'm going to hover off the model, and I'm press spacebar, and I'm going to decrease the draw size a little. Now the Z Modeler brush is context sensitive, so if you hover over a poly, an edge, or a point, you'll be able to perform different actions. For this demo, we're just going to use the default settings. So I'm going to use Q Mesh, the actual insert edge loop, and then just move points. So I'm just going to quickly come through and start moving some of these points along this cube here to generate a quick building. So to do this, I'm just going to hover over poly and simply click and drag, and that's going to allow me to apply that Q Mesh action to that poly. Now, this Q Mesh action, when you're actually applying it, by just clicking and dragging, you'll notice that it's also going to fuse or weld to the actual polys next to it. So this will allow you to come through and start pulling out different areas on your model and connect them all together like so. Now the Z Modeler brush also has an alternate functionality for selection. So I can hover over any of these polys here and hold down Alt and this will tag these areas with this white poly group. Now with this white poly group selected across these faces here, if I apply a Q mesh action to this poly here, any area that has that white poly group will also have that effect applied. So if we come over here and just click on this and drag out, you can see that that has applied that Q mesh action to that entire area. So I'm just gonna come through and add some edge loops now and just kind of build up a simple building here. So to add an edge loop, I'm just gonna hover over an edge and then simply click and drag and I'll be able to apply an edge loop to that area. So I'm just going to come through and add some edges through here. And may rotate the model and add some here and here. Just keep rotating around. Maybe add another one here. And now I'm going to come through and tag all these faces in here with this white poly group. So holding Alt and then just dragging across the model there to tag that entire area. And I'm going to apply the Q mesh action to one of these polys, which will affect everything. And I can start building that kind of building shape out of that structure. Use the white poly group here to tag those guys and pull this out. It's going to be kind of a base ground area. I'm going to do the same on this side here. So something like that. And then maybe I'll add another kind of structure through here. So this whole process, I'm just basically using the actual insert edge loop option and then the Q mesh function. It's a very quick way to come through and start describing different shapes on your model. 
add another edge up here and build this guy up like that. And then I think I'll build these guys up too. So just coming through and generating some sort of quick building type detail. Along the top here, I'm going to add some more edge loops here. Just create kind of an indent to this shape here. Tag these areas with that white polygroup. And then I'm going to Q mesh inward to get that kind of shape there. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Maybe put a little air conditioning type unit or something. So just coming through and looking for some interesting kind of design options on this building here. I'm just going to generate a little bit different result on my actual city. So maybe something like that. Maybe a billboard that was on that structure there. And then maybe there's another quick little building structure here. And this also has some little heating or air conditioning units on top of it. And then we'll pull this guy out. And then maybe bring this out one more. So there we go. There is a quick kind of city building right there, generated very quick using the Z Modeler brush. Now I've gone through and actually generated quite a bit more of these kind of like little buildings here. And I just have a tool loaded in with multiple subtools, and there's a different building for each subtool. So I'm just going to scroll through these guys quick. Now a lot of these were all created the same way using just the Z Modeler brush to quickly block out different shapes and forms. So I've got some small buildings, then I've got some medium sized ones, and then I've got some tall ones, and then finally some extremely large ones, so two of those guys there. So this subtool right now has uh, 26 different buildings here, just all created that kind of similar way using the Z Modeler brush and just quickly modeling all these different kind of shapes and forms just basically using the edge loop functionality and the Q mesh action to generate these shapes. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to take all these buildings here and I want to generate a alpha map that I'm then going to use to kind of populate a cityscape. So to do this process I'm going to use these buildings along with 2.5D to generate a quick tiling alpha.